Hi, Vinyl Monkey here. Welcome anybody who's come back after last week. Um, so apologies that uh, I think I might have took a step too far last week with um, Eric Dolphy and Out to Lunch and the comments I've had both uh, on the on the channel and uh, outside of it have been that uh, yeah, people found that uh, a little bit much so this week is very much about uh, back to basics and uh, that little introduction there uh, you don't get much more basic than the first album in the letter E I want to talk about which is Dwayne Eddy um, from 1959 The Twangs The Thang um, so Dwayne Eddy yeah found fame with his what he called his twangy guitar um, the title says here, Dwayne Eddy, his twangy guitar and his backing band The Rebels. Um, this was his second or third album I think, he was 21 in 1959 when he produced this. It's largely instrumental um, and it pretty much goes along like that stuff you've just heard with great twangy guitar and, um, and, and saxophone up front. Um, it reminds me of the sort of sound you would hear in that uh, American um, series Happy Days which was set around the same time as this, the late 50s, 1960 America uh, where the Fonz would bang the jukebox and uh, a track would come on and it could well be one of the, the Dwayne Eddy tracks. Uh, so yeah, it's a really uh, feel good, back to basics. Um, Great stuff, Dwayne Eddy, The Twang's The Thang, 1959. And I think the other thing to point out, yeah, 1959, uh, that makes this 62 years old. This album's nearly as old as me. Uh, it's been well played. Um, I picked it up in a second-hand shop for just a couple of quid and it plays absolutely fantastically. And I think it just shows the, the durability of, of vinyl as a, a format. Um, I'm absolutely certain that the CDs behind the camera there, I've got several thousand CDs, many of them are already uh, disintegrating and, and some of them unplayable um, and I'm, I'm sure they won't last as long where I think this you'll still be able to play it and enjoy it another 50 or 60 years time so yeah Dwayne Eddy, Twang's the Thang, 1959 second album I want to talk about uh, is with some trepidation after last week I'm going back to jazz uh, but this is very different this is Bill Evans and Jim Hall um, there's Bill Evans the sorry there's Bill Evans the famous uh, jazz guitarist um, he was involved with the Miles Davis band when they did some of their uh, best stuff and Jim Hall the jazz guitarist. Uh, an unusual combination really in jazz, uh, just a piano and a guitar. Bill Evans' bands normally involved him on piano backed by a bass and drums. Um, but this one, the, 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 they actually work beautifully together. The interplay is, is really, really cool and sophisticated. It's a very, very relaxing album. Um, it's on the one hand easy to listen to, but on the other, you, the more you listen to it, the more you're hearing it, the more you're finding it. Um, and it's also got one of the great covers of all time, I think. This is uh, a photograph by famous American photographer Tony Frizzell. Uh, Frizzell. Um, slightly spoiled by the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab banner that they've put across the top of this uh, edition of it, but. Um, um, anyway, it's, a, it's, it's, it's one of the great jazz albums in my opinion, this, and it's Bill Evans and Jim Hall, uh, Undercurrent, from 1962. Staying in the 60s, from 1968, the next album I want to talk about is Donny Elbert. This is introducing Donny Elbert. Um, not a household name in soul music, Donny Elbert, unless you're a Northern Soul aficionado. I think he didn't have that many 
uh, hits, but his singing voice is absolutely sweet as a nut. Um, and on this album, uh, he mainly pays tribute uh, to the songs of Otis Redding. I think of the ten songs on here, seven or eight of them are Otis Redding songs. Um, but he kicks the album off with an absolutely stunning version of Smokey Robinson's My Girl, which I think stands up there at the with the very, very best versions of that song, you know, by The Temptations and The Four Tops, etc. The sound quality on this album is absolutely fantastic. This is a budget sort of album, you can you can tell by the, the cover really. It's it was probably um, it's on contour records. It it probably was budget priced when it was new. I picked it up in a bargain bin, I think for two pound or one pound fifty. Um, but the sound quality is absolutely superb. Um, it's such a great album that I've I seen it again in another record shop for a similar sort of price a few months later. So I bought another one just in case there was a, a few less cracks or pops, crackles or pops between the records. There's only the odd, odd, odd ones, but uh, I don't think you could have too many copies of this at that price. So it's introducing Donny Elbert. Um, 1968. And moving into the 70s, this is from 1976. Um, very different. Um, this is Brian Eno, Before and After Science. Um, I first came across Eno in the early 70s with Roxy Music, and I went to see Roxy Music at, in, in Newcastle. Um, I think that the first album and, and not long being out, the second album might have just been launched. And uh, Brian Eno just like looked and sounded like somebody from another planet. He was outrageously dressed, this really weird hairdo, high forehead, and he was twiddling these knobs on the stage and making um, strange sort of sounds, which which really added to the uh, to the to the. The, the general sort of what sounded very new, what Roxy Music were doing in 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 those days, and um, and then I'd sort of he left Roxy Music after he fell out allegedly with Brian Ferry, and I suppose who wouldn't? But uh, he uh, I, I, and I'd sort of forgot about him, but he produced three or four albums in the mid seventies that I didn't latch onto at the time. I came to this later. Um, which, uh, uh, yeah, got some really great songs. I mean, this album, it's almost like two albums, really. Side one uh, is much more upbeat. They're great individual songs. The rhythm section is right to the fore. Phil Collins plays drums on most of those, and uh, they're, they're, they're just great individual songs. But the second side uh, hangs together in, in like one theme, and the songs sort of meld into each other, uh, and it's much more mellow lush sort of laid he's actually got a really good singing voice as brian eno and uh, i think if you were going to look up any of these you might start with side two um first track here he comes absolutely beautiful followed by julie with again lovely and and, and maybe the last track spider and i which is, is perhaps one of the the strongest tracks on the album but this is one of those type of albums i think which you you don't get bored with you you, you put it on uh, the next time you'll hear something different in it it's it's complex but it's not it's not difficult to listen to um, a lovely album Brian Eno 1976 before and after science and then the last album uh, much more recently this is from 2016 I think um, 2015, sorry, and um, this is Justin Townsell, um, and it's called Single Mothers, Absent Fathers. Uh, it was actually re originally released as two separate albums, Single Mothers Coming First and Absent Fathers Following a few months later, but this edition pairs the two together and they do sound like one album. There are, there are 20 tracks on this album. And I think even if you were going to try and do a harsh edit and and you know pick out the any weaker tracks, you, you couldn't 
you couldn't take off more than two or three of those. I think they're really old, strong tracks. And their strength is the songwriting. Uh, the music is beautiful. It's very simple. It's simply just in Townsville, an acoustic guitar backed by a, a bass and drums, but illuminated by a, a sort of haunting, lovely pedal steel guitar. And I suppose you, you, if you wanted to be critical, you might say the music is, is perhaps very simple and quite samey samey through the whole double album, but I think that just adds to the atmosphere of it and, and it helps uh, draw attention, I think, to the quality of the lyrics, which are actually heartbreaking, actually. They're uh, just in terms of. Um, he, he happened to have a, a famous father, Steve Earle. He shouldn't be defined by that, but he, he happened to have a, 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 a who had lots and lots of issues with drugs and one thing and another. So he, he, he's had a difficult uh, time in, in that respect. Um, but these songs are just so personal, so heartbreaking. Some of them remind me of, sort of John Lennon's mother on the Plastic Ono band in that he's sort of bearing his soul so um, starkly. Um, sometimes you feel you're, you're intruding on his, his grief by listening to this stuff, but uh, uh, yeah, really great, great album. Sadly, um, you know, five years after this, in his, I think, still in his 30s, Justin Townsell um, died from an accidental drugs overdose, so um, which just adds to the to the sort of sadness of the listening. But I don't know why it is that we enjoy listening to sad records, but I certainly do. Certainly, if the the quality of this, so it's Justin Townsell, single mothers, absent fathers, from twenty fifteen. So that was our uh, brief tour through the letter E in this collection behind me. Um, I hope you find one or two of them interesting and it spares you to maybe look them up and explore them for yourselves. Uh, welcome any comments or suggestions. Um, so I'm pretty new to this uh, YouTube stuff so just getting started with it. But I hope some of you might uh, join me uh, when we look at some albums starting with the letter F next week. All right, cheers. Thanks.